Hello, investing friends. Hello, investing friends. Trying not to yell when I open the show. Hello, invest, but I'm so excited to see you. Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you, friends of financial freedom. Got uh, Cassava Sciences, more color on the phase two from yesterday. Uh, obviously had some uh, internet technical issues. Thanks for coming back. Cassava Sciences got color on the phase two from yesterday. Yesterday, one thing we didn't emphasize is that the second cohort of people looks like they had a, more people with mid-stage uh, Alzheimer's disease rather than mild Alzheimer's disease. Something that Jaker pointed out in the Investors Club Discord is those phase threes that Cassava Sciences is currently running, the two phase, large large uh, placebo-controlled phase threes, uh, are uh, blah, 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 blah. the two large phase threes are stratified for mid and mild uh, Alzheimer's disease. So they're already looking out for that. So in uh, in it, 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 and so they're, they're, already, they're already looking out for that. Sorry, get them discombobulated with the show starting again. So they're already looking out for that. So we'll check that out. So that's good. And the CMS is only look is only uh, enrolling people that is uh, that are. Gosh, I was so much better on the first show. Let's go back to the first show. The CMS is only enrolling people uh, that are responders in the first place. So we'll take a look at that. I'm so disappointed in myself. I did it. Said it so much better. In the first go, I, I only had one good uh, one, one good repetition. IKT inhibit case is over a buck. It was at ninety nine cents. It's a buck a buck five now. It was up over a buck. It was up to buck fifteen. It's got its hold has been lifted. It's got a really cool, interesting drug in Parkinson's disease, also in leukemia, perhaps. But what they're doing is kinases, C able kinases. We talked about how kinases can activate and inactivate things inside the cells. They've got the C able kinase that seems to play a part in Parkinson's. Parkinson's, uh, they got the C able kinase inhibitor that seem that because C able kinase seems to play a part in Parkinson's, shutting down the cell, shutting down, uh, causing, uh, causing uh, brain problems. So uh, if they can inhibit that, they can keep the cell, the brain cells alive, perhaps. Uh, and that, that's, the, that's, that's the general of their mechanism of action. There is a, we knew they had really good uh, preclinical, meaning in animals, clinical means in people. We knew they were really pre good preclinical uh, data on that, really, really encouraging, but we had top line results from that. It, it's not, it wasn't, we didn't, we didn't have anything other than just, here's, here's what it looks like. Now it's been published in a uh, peer-reviewed journal, so we get it's more it's more uh, trustworthy in general. But it's we get more details too, and that's so that's a pretty big deal that that was published. So that along with the hold, for, we just saw IKT doubled in the last couple of weeks. So perhaps that's it. But that the, the hold being lifted and the publication of their mechanism of action. Parkinson's is about one sixth the size, sync, not synthesize one sixth the size of Alzheimer's disease. So it's an interesting idea. And then their, their kinase technology is, is very interesting as well. They've got a platform they're working on. Very interesting stuff. And we like their CEO, Dr. Milton Werner. Then we'll talk about genius and their genius ideas for taking down the shorts. So genius is uh, genius. So the, we, we, so the prime brokers like JP Morgan, uh, it gives share, create fake shares for the hedge funds to short. And that is how prime, that is how prime brokers like JP Morgan make most of their money. They make most of their money that way. Just it's, uh, they, they, they take the hard to borrow shares of these stocks that are obliterated like AMC, GameStop, Cassava Sciences, uh, Genius, Hellbiz, Cosmos, 1847, uh, Verb. And uh, they 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 let they let the hedge funds keep borrowing fake shares that don't exist, creating fake shares out of nothing, getting paid tons and tons of money for just committing a crime, just stealing from shareholders is what they're doing. So that's how the prime brokers brokers make most of their money, and they they've been doing this for more than a decade. Uh, Doc uh, Lucy, investigative reporter Lucy Comisar came on our show and spoke with us about it, and then we saw Wes Christian speak about it. Now companies have started genius uh, hired Wes Christian and his technological partner in crime, Share Intel. And uh, they, they Genius went 10X. They were at 50 cents. They went to five bucks in like a week or two. Hellbiz did the same thing. They doubled in a day. They, they went up even more from there. Uh, 1847 went up, hired these guys. They went up like 50%. Verb doubled, then they raised money. Uh, Cosmos, I said Cosmos went up 100X. 
they went up, they didn't go up 300, they didn't go up 100x, excuse me. They went up 300x. They hired Share Intel, uh, PR'd it, said we hired Share Intel, and the short said, oh my gosh. And the stock went from eight cents to $24. If you had 10,000, you buy, buy $10,000 worth of a stock, turn around, you got 3 million bucks, just like that. All right, 111 people here. Great to see you guys. Thanks for coming back. Uh, when I went to redo the show, I saw that we had 464 people on the show. That uh, That's really good. We, get, we already have more than 2,000 from yesterday's show. So I was really excited to, uh, to, to, uh, to come back and see you guys. Thanks, 111 people here. That's good numbers. Thanks, guys, for coming back. All right, uh, not an investment. About, oh, what else we got? SC Pharmaceuticals uh, has taken. So anyway, we'll take a look at. at, at we'll take a look at the uh, at the, the the these guys hiring Share Intel, and then their stocks exploding. We just sent out two days ago on the twenty third. Somebody hired Share Intel. I found it yesterday morning and sent it out to uh, subscribers. Sign up for the newsletter to get that one before people find out about that one. We'll take out check out the other five. There's a sixth one, and then SC Pharmaceuticals. Uh, the insiders spent even more of their own dough, took on a tax liability uh, to get even more uh, to get even more shares uh, through options and restricted stock units. Part of the incentive plan. We'll take a look at that and the analysis of it. Not investment advisor, not investment advice, number one ranked stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us. It's controlled by the hedge funds and the special interests, and they don't have our best interest in mind. But that is okay because we have each other we have investors club and we are going to do a way better job than the bozos in the financial media ever could anyway if you like that please hit like the algorithm likes like and you my friend are going to like liking like i'll tell you that and if you thought that you liked liking like you are going to love sharing this retweeting it reposting it on linkedin sharing it on facebook and sharing on youtube however good things are shared and also commenting and chatting. All right, thanks guys for being here. Great to see you. Let's dive in. That intro must be too long. I lost people on the intro, <laughs> the uh, the spiel, the shorten the spiel. Rough day in the market. S and P down 0.75. Nasdaq down 1.05 percent. Uh, Inhibit case though is up 18 uh, percent. Cassava down 8 percent now. Eight and a half percent now. So it's a 2692, but it was down as low as 2572. So recovering somewhat. Uh, the, so the market actually recovered somewhat as well. The, yeah, it actually, I didn't notice that. It actually, it actually bounced back significantly. So the NASDAQ is still down a whole percentage point, but it was down more than two points at uh, 2.25 points. Okay, let's dive into the stories. Okay, the Saba trial stratification. So we talked about, let's put it on inhibit case because that's the happy story. We talked about enrichment and how the FDA encourages uh, companies to enrich their trials and most trials are enriched, meaning uh, you, you looked for a population the drug's gonna work for. So you don't just say, okay, here's a drug for depression. No, you, you say this is for, uh, let, me, let me give it a better, Better example, well, you, you say here's a drug uh, not just for Alzheimer's disease, but it's for mild Alzheimer's disease, or not just for Parkinson's, but for mild Parkinson's, or something like that. Okay, and so anyway, they encourage uh, enrichment like the CMS study. The CMS study enrolls everybody uh, that, uh, that has mild or mid Alzheimer's, and, and then that, that's, for, that's, that's one year of open label. And then it takes the responders and puts them a year of, of, uh, of placebo control. So, uh, so that's enrichment. So the FDA encourages it to, to find, a, find a, uh, a population it works for. So that trial design enriches the population so you get a, a, a population the drug works for. Okay, so that, that's, that's, uh, that's enrichment. And then stratification comes along with that. Stratifying is just identifying different groups. You might usually see stratification by age group. And so how does, how does this drug work? Like, like the COVID vaccine was stratified, or it should have been stratified. How does it work in 16 to 17 year olds? How does it work in, in the different age groups or whatever? The elderly, the, the elderly, the young, whatever. Okay, so there, and then, so, this, so, so let's take a look at, here is, this is the two, 
the two phase threes for cassava. So this is from clinicaltrials.gov where the actual data, the actual uh, registered trials are. And so the big idea is randomization will be stratified by low or high mini mental state exam, 16 to 20 or 21 to 27. And then the mini mental state exam is for dementia in general, but it's not, it's not made for Alzheimer's. So it's used as part of a way to diagnose Alzheimer's or to, to uh, show the severity, to show the severity of it, but it wasn't made directly for Alzheimer's. So uh, there's, there's a dementia stage and a typical score. And so no dementia, typical score is between 27, uh, is greater than 27 and, the, and that's out of 30 total. So 27 to 30. So that's no dementia. So if you took this, it'd be like taking a test with 30 possible points. You should get a 27 to 30. And then mild cognitive impairment, 24 to 27. Okay, so so uh, okay, so 27 is not included. 28 to 28 through 30 is no dementia. 24 through 27, including 27, is mild. Okay, and then that's I'm sorry, that's mild cognitive impairments. And then mild dementia is 18 to 23. And then moderate is 10 to 18. So that's not the, that's not the nice distinction you want to see for Alzheimer's. The mid Alzheimer, the, the mild Alzheimer's, and then mid Alzheimer's. This is the uh, this is dementia where it goes none mild cognitive impairments, then mild dementia, then moderate dementia. So that's not a perfect lineup. So they couldn't use they couldn't use a perfect. So so it was no dementia is 28 to 30. Mild cognitive impairment is 24 to 27. Mild dementia is 18 to 23, and moderate dementia is 10 to 18. So they're doing, they're stratifying, randomized will be stratified by lower high mental many state exam, 16 to 20 or 21 to 27. And again, so that's gonna, 21 to 27 it was, is gonna encompass mild cognitive impairment and mild dementia. But moderate dementia goes 10 to 18, and that is a 16 to 20. So, so 16 to 20. So they're calling moderate Alzheimer's disease 16 to 20 on the, that scale, and mild 21 to 27. And that's terrific, and and, um, and that's uh, that's that's great stuff. But the 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 bigger story is to me is that this is identified population ahead of time when they when they did when they PR'd yesterday, saying that this is working very well in patients with mild uh, with mild dementia. Uh, they, uh, you could have said, yeah, but you can always uh, torture the data. We talked about that. Like after, after you, you run a big trial, you could go back and, and if you torture the data enough, you can get it to confess to anything. Uh, so that, that is, that is, so that might be de debatable. How, how uh, valuable is that? But the idea is these phase threes. They identified that way before we, we saw that data yesterday. So they knew ahead of time to identify these. So it, it, there's just a lot more weight on that is what I'm saying. So uh, so th that it puts extra weight on the data from yesterday because uh, they were not torturing the data to try to get it, try to get it, uh, something good out of it. They knew ahead of time to look for mild and look for mid. And then, uh, and then, I wanted to share this as well. So, okay, sorry, sorry to finish that off. So that in, it enhances yesterday's data because they, they knew to look for mild and mid, so they weren't torturing the data later. It also, the CMS is enriched, so this should only be milds, or if it's mids, it's, it's mids that it's working for. So the, the, that the CMS should be really, really good. And the phase threes, even if the primary outcome, let's look at that. I'm sorry I'm all over the place. The technical, I'm going to blame it on the technical difficulties that are not smoother on this. Uh, the change from baseline in 12, so the primary outcome is change in ADAS COG. And I just wanted to point out, it doesn't say change in ADAS COG in mild and change in ADAS COG in mid. So uh, we'll, there, 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 it's, it'll still be an overall number. But even if that number is just okay. Like it should be, these people are being screened to have Alzheimer's disease. So it should be somewhat like the first 50 people from the, from the, the phase two. So it should be like, I can't remember if it was 63 or 68% of those people uh, improved on an absolute basis, but it's really good. So, 
so the idea is even if the primary outcome is just uh, is just pretty good and not everybody going up five and at five points or whatever, even if it's just stabilizing people or so, uh, they, it'll still be they stratified people for model mean. So they should still be able to look and say even if it's even if it's only good for overall, they should still be able to identify that most. And we'll talk about why it's most that most people this worked for uh, because they were in the mild group and that worked and worked exceedingly well. It should be better than phase, it should be better than the phase two because again these people are screened for Alzheimer's disease. Only fifty of the two hundred and sixteen, less than a quarter of the phase two, were screened for Alzheimer's disease. All of these people are screened for Alzheimer's disease with a biomarker. This is with the with the phosphorylated tau one eighty one to total tau ratio. Okay, and then why am I saying that most of these people are going to have mild are going to be in the mild group? I said yesterday, yesterday that ChatGPT said that about 70% of Alzheimer's patients at any given time in the U.S. are mild. Uh, R Dub Dub in the Investors Club Discord said it's probably a little more, a little bit more like more than half. It's like 50 point. We'll see what it, we'll see what it, what, it, what was it? Oh, I'm here. 50.4% had mild, 30.3 had moderate, and 19.3 had severe in, in a certain case. Okay, so that's 50.4% for mild and 30.3% for moderate, and they're not doing severe. So that, that comes out to, if, you're, if you drop the other 20% and you have, it, it's five eighths, it comes out to like five eighths should be mild is what we should see. Because they're not putting anybody in there that's severe and they're enrolling everybody that's mild or mid, and it should be about five eighths of those people are mild. If, if this is correct, and, and, that, and that's, this is the lower boundary, the other things that it might be closer to 70%. So five eighths or higher should have mild. So that, that and, then, and, uh, and, then, and, and everybody should have Alzheimer's disease. So this bodes well for phase three. Even if I can't say it as smoothly as I wish I could, and gosh darn, remember yesterday, gosh darn firstein, that tweet without any analysis at all, just because Cassava Sciences gave him that uh, crappily worded uh, opening sentence about, 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 it was just about the same as, uh, as I had to say, had, had about no change. Well, he spun that around to be same as placebo. So uh, khn.org, whatever that crap is, is saying a new data show cassava science's alzheimer's drug has placebo-like efficacy what is your source for that adam firstine on 124 his stupid tweet with no backing at all Urgh, grr. but we knew all that all that crap always happens so 62.5 percent should be mild in the study and 100 percent in cms if i can if i can spit it out faster then let's go to inhibicase we'll do better on inhibicase uh, two things on inhibicase. One, the clinical hold is lifted. That's big news. Two, their data was published. You get top line data, and then like maybe years later, like a year, two years, even three years later, uh, you get uh, in published in a peer reviewed journal. Hopefully, more data, and it's usually not even complete data at that time. But you get deeper data, more data. Uh, you get like most of the data at that time, let's say. And that's what we got here. Uh, for inhibicase and third they're now over a dollar they were in danger of being delisted by nasdaq for being uh, under a buck but they they came up on their own they, they didn't have to do a reverse split or anything like that okay inhibicase therapeutics announces fda has lifted the full clinical hold on 009 and parkinson's disease we are grateful for the expeditious review by the fda for our response to the clinical hold on 009 in parkinson's says friend of the show Dr. Milton Werner, we believe that we now have clarity on the FDA's expectations as we move forward in the 201 clinical trial for 009. We are now working to reopen clinical trial sites and initiate screening and enrollment of, of patients for the trial following agreed upon updates of the protocol and informed consent form. We anticipate completing these restart tasks by the end of the first quarter. That's good news. I, I skipped, I forgot to highlight, I guess. Uh... Mm. We'll get we'll get into how the uh, their their mechanism of action works in a moment. 
the agent, well, I just want to get into what the agency uh, wanted. Blah, 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 blah. The agency requested the company measure the safety and steady state pharmacokinetic profile of the 200 milligram dose in six healthy subjects prior to administration of the 200 milligram dose in Parkinson's patient. That's what I wanted to get at. Sorry, it took me a moment. That, uh, now this is a, this will be a seamless study is what, we, what we're seeing here, a so-called seamless study. But they're basically doing their phase one, another phase one. When you use healthy subjects, that's, that's phase one. Uh, so they're, they're, they're basically back to phase one, except it'll be a phase one slash two A, I guess, is a seamless study is what we're seeing here. So the agency requested the company measure the safety and steady state pharmacokinetic profile of the 200 mega, mega, milligram dose in six healthy subjects prior to administration of the 200 milligram dose in Parkinson's patients. The 201 trial will resume at the 50 and 100 milligram dose immediately and the safety PK measurement at the 200 milligram dose will be performed simultaneously. So they're, that they're sort of doing another phase one there. Not a big deal, six people, six healthy volunteers. I think they can find six healthy volunteers, but just wanted to point that out. Okay, and then let's talk about how their drug works. I009 is a C-able tyrosine kinase inhibitor that has been shown to halt disease progression uh, okay, C-able tyro tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Okay, that's a mouthful. What what is any of that? What's a kinase in the first place? So a kinase. So a, let's talk about what a kinase is. Then this is inhibiting kinases. Let's remember that. And then this is a special type of kinase, a C-able tyrosine kinase. Okay, so what's a kinase? Let's remember it's inhibiting kinases. And then this is a special type of C-able tyrosine kinase. All right, what's a kinase? Remember, kinases are a type of enzymes that add phosphates to other molecules, such as sugars or proteins. This may cause other molecules to become either active or inactive. So very powerful stuff. Enzymes that cause other molecules to become active or inactive uh, by uh, adding phosphates uh, to them. Okay. And then this C able thing. So able is activated to stimulate cell, proli or, uh, cell proliferation or differentiation, survival or death, retraction or migration. If you remember Dr. Warner telling us how their drug works, C able, uh, able is involved in survival or death of the cell. It seems as if Parkinson's, if I'm remembering this correctly, Parkinson's is signaling the cell to uh, activate able and kill the cell as if there's a problem here, shut it down to control the fire type of thing. But, it, but perhaps it's the immune system doing, doing too much. And uh, so they're, they're inhibiting, so, this, so that takes us all the way to inhibiting that C-able tyrosine kinase uh, to stop the programmed cell death of Parkinson's, uh, if I'm saying that correctly. That, that's, that's the gist of it. All right, and then uh, Inhibicase Therapeutics announces publication demonstrating potential for C. able as a key therapeutic target in Parkinson's disease and related disorders. So this is the publication of their animal model. Animal models of Parkinson's, this is in Science Translational Medicine. Animal models of Parkinson's disease suggest that activation of abelsine tyrosine kinase plays an essential role in the initiation and progression of alpha-synuclein pathology and initiates processes leading to degeneration of dopaminergic and non-dopaminergic neurons. Given the potential role of C-ABLE in Parkinson's disease, a C-ABLE inhibitor library was developed to identify orally available C-ABLE inhibitors capable of crossing the blood-brain barrier based on predefined characteristics, leading to the discovery of IKT009, uh, 009, a brain penetrant C-ABLE inhibitor with a favorable toxicology profile. Remember, some of these C-ABLE inhibitors uh, are too, have too, bro too broad of a target, hit, hit too many targets. And so this one does not, uh, does not inhibit the other targets you don't want inhibited as much as some other ones. So a favorable toxicology profile also remember, this is a small molecule, and the, one of the problems of small molecules can be off-target stuff. When you're talking about 
monoclonal antibodies, that's a part that's replicating a part of the immune system. And these antibodies are, are known, they, they notice to search for certain bodies, uh, they're anti those bodies. So they're, they're specific, they're, they're, they're targeting things. Whereas a small molecule is sort of a shotgun approach, or it can be more of a shotgun approach. Uh, and and that, that can be one of the problems is that there's off target toxicities. And so th what they're saying is here, they've got a favorable toxicology profile because they don't have as many off target toxicities uh, as other drugs of this kind. It was analyzed for therapeutic potential in animal models of slowly progressive alpha-synuclein dependent Parkinson's disease in mouse models of both inherited and sporadic Parkinson's 009 suppressed C-able activation to, to baseline and substantially protected dopaminergic neurons from degeneration when administered therapeutically by once daily oral gavage beginning four weeks after disease initiation. So remember, this is mice. So once daily oral gavage, what is gavage? The administration of food or drugs by force. So that's force feeding these poor mice. By gavage, beginning four weeks after disease initiation, recovery of motor function in Parkinson's disease mice occurred within eight weeks. So they, so they were force fed them the, the, the C-able tyrosine kinase inhibitor 009 uh, for four weeks. Uh, they, uh, 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 four weeks after the disease started, and within eight weeks, uh, the recovery of motor function in Parkinson's disease mice occurred within eight weeks of initiating treatment, concomitantly with a reduction of alpha-synuclein pathology in the mouse brain. That's a really good biomarker to see. So we talked yesterday about the placebo effect. We said that most things go away on their own. They induced Parkinson's in these mice, or a Parkinson's-like state, but did the mice fix themselves somehow? Uh, or did their drug do it? Most things in life, we said, we just in life generally, uh, fix themselves and that makes up for the placebo effect. So the, these, these mice got better, but was it their drug? Well, there was a biomarker that coincided with them getting better, the alpha-synuclein misfolded protein of uh, Parkinson's disease. So pretty good. And then getting it published in a peer-reviewed journal is a big deal. So that's good stuff, and that's why this company is, look at that. Now that's a chart. Now that's a chart. Where were we? We were down here at, got as low as 42 cents, and it's uh, almost, what, up 150% uh, since then. And then, so that's Inhibicase. And then we got Genius, Hellbiz, and the like. Let me make sure I got everything over here. Do -do, do -do, do -do. Do -do, do -do. Gotcha. All right, Genius, Hellbiz, and the like. So let's just look at. Oh, let's look at Cosmos to have some fun while we talk about it. So Cosmo has settled down to about 100x, about 100x. Uh, so back in, in November, they'd shorted this thing down to 8 cents. You can see they hired Share Intel. I guess it went up to about 32 cents before it spiked. It went up to 23 and change. So from eight cents to 24 is uh, like a 300X, 300X, unbelievable. What the heck did these guys do? They were being shorted into oblivion by the evil shorts that destroy companies to make a little bit of money, destroy people's jobs, destroy people's investments so they can steal a little bit of money. And they hired Wes Christian and his, his technological partner in crime share Intel uh, to, to go after these guys. And, uh, and the short said, oh no, we're not gonna get away with uh, printing their shares into oblivion. They, 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 what they do is companies in general, this is so evil because companies in general list publicly so that they can raise funds uh, and do business and, and hire people and create life-saving drugs. Uh, or in Hell Business case, they're doing uh, green transportation, they're doing scooters and, and stuff like that. 
in Genius's case, they're doing online education for, for, for people that, because uh, oh, not like our education system is broken or anything. Uh, and uh, frankly, I don't know what the other ones, uh, it, Verb's a, an internet retailer and gosh, we just don't have enough internet retailers. <laughs> uh, 1847, I don't know what they do. But anyway, the companies raise, they, get, they list publicly so they can raise money. What these evil shorts do is they uh, so there's a hundred shares and uh, if, if our company if our if our if our stock if our company's worth a hundred million dollars each share is worth a million bucks and then these evil shorts flood the market with fake shares so they go to raise money and the value just keeps dropping and plummeting and plummeting and they can't raise money and uh, all the investors uh, get shaken out and there's no investors left because they, they 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 have no money left at least not that they want to put through anymore and they have no idea what's happening people lose their jobs. Provenge uh, was a drug, a life uh, end line drug for uh, par for prostate cancer that was approved because it was always real by Dendrion and the evil shorts did their crap and went after printed shares, uh, did all their evil stuff uh, in saying that the people defending the drug were the evil ones, all their gaslighting, all that stuff. And so, but now the tide is turning though. The tide is turning. We've been talking about taking matters in our own hands and issuing, getting companies to issue digital dividends and things like that. Uh, and then and Cassava Sciences uh, did their defamation case. Genius hired Wes Christian. They got the former director of the FBI is on their board of directors. They had their task force. We saw that list of 10 things. Issue that digital dividend. Uh, uh, sue. <laughs> uh, do a reverse split. Dual list. Dual list. And we, we were talking about how smart it was to dual list and do it on uh, the other, the other one on uh, T zero, and then afterward, people were saying that, uh, that's a really great idea. I don't know if I came up with that with that one because you can't short on T zero. But after I was saying that, the genius CEO was like, "I didn't know you couldn't, couldn't short on T zero. What a great idea! Let's do a list on T zero. So it is a great idea. So there are things you can do to go after these evil bastards, and it's you can see it's working three hundred x. So uh, there's we'll take a look at these five businesses five stocks that hired these guys and went up so much. There's a sixth one I found and I emailed a subscriber, sign up for the newsletter and find it. All right. So let's talk about Hellbiz. Hellbiz hires Share Intel for due diligence, advancing in battle against illegal short selling. And so that was on the 23rd. How to do Kerplowy. So Hellbiz, 12 cents up to 52 cents. So it quadrupled and it held on to a triple. Way to go, and that's just in a couple days. These guys are kingmakers now. West Christian and Share and Share Intel are kingmakers now. Here we have Cosmos Health, distributor of pharmaceuticals. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Has retained shareholder intelligence services, Share Intel, to review the trading platform patterns of the company's common stock for the past two years and going forward. Did that have any effect on the stock? Can you divine any, any, any chart action there? Can you see anything in the chart? We're down here at eight cents. It went up to 24 bucks and it held on to 672. It held on to almost hundred X or depending where you start the movement from, which is just, just a giant, giant, giant move. However you slice it. Uh, how about genius? Genius start. I really like uh, the 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 CEO. He, he's just like what we've been saying. He's like, what the heck? And then, and, but he wanted to do something about it, and and he made something happen. Great for him. Uh, this was on November tenth. They hired those guys. Genius. Genius. Oh, while we're here, Roger James Hamilton. He's even got a great name, Roger James Hamilton. Should have been a James Bond character or something. Roger James Hamilton. And if that chart won't come up there. There we go. So it was down at 50 cents, 47 cents, 30 cents. Uh, is it lower? Is it, so it's down at 30 cents. It spiked to five and it's still hanging on to more than four. So it's more than 10 X and it held on to it. Uh, and as an analyst, as Roger James Hamilton pointed out, he said, hey, an analyst just came out uh, with a $19 price target. No reason it's got to stop at five or four or whatever. 1847 on November 3rd, higher share Intel. Uh, so this is right here. So this one is not, this is not as easy to see. Let's see if we can see it better on six months. 
And so we get a like a dollar eighty up to two eighty three. So like a fifty percent spike on that. And that's like that's like the least one I saw. And then Verb just did as well. And they spiked, as you can see, they doubled from 20. The dog won't stop licking himself. 20 cents to 40 something cents. So, and then they raised money. So good on them. So if you're going to raise, if, if they, they, these companies destroy you because you can't raise money. So they could have perhaps kept going if they didn't raise money, but they doubled and raised money. And then there's finally, there's SC Pharmaceuticals. As we can see, John Tucker has a form four here for insider ownership. So does uh, Rachel Noakes. I forget which uh, role, what role she is, CFO perhaps. Uh, but this is part of, there's, when, you, when you don't understand these things, there's always look at the, the explanation down here. So this is part of the incentive plan. So these are uh, restricted stock units and options that vest over a four year period. And we don't need to get into the technicalities of it, but I wanted, there's a really good uh, comment from Scard, who's a terrific part of the Investors Club Discord. It says, this is a blossoming opportunity. The CEO exercised his 2029 expiring options. Downside for him, pays income taxes today, risks a loss if this doesn't take off. So if this, if this goes nowhere, he pays, he's paying cash now as uh, as as scard is pointing out uh the upside is long-term capital gains meter is ticking he has this as a personal asset he captures dividends if there's any change of control clauses it's not an issue he can gift the shares it is such a pleasure to hear a guy who behaves like he's spending his own money the marketing and distribution strategies are perfect for patients in the company FDA approved launching Q1, 93% of polled cardiologists say they will prescribe. This is for Ferocix, SC Pharmaceuticals. This stay-at-home treatment replaces hospitalization. Approval came Monday. This $153 million market cap company has a $6 billion potential market. P.S. This executive action is worth more than a sparse progress report. It would be fun to peak, but I would not make any decisions on it. Mr. Tucker hasn't, or maybe he has. All right. That was too much stuff. Too much stuff. I saw... You guys left some comments. I I'll, 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 I'll want to say them now. Wakis, dear Joe, thank you for your hard work and perseverance. Your show is, is hope for the true believers of Sava. Hope to see Remy uh, man up like Roger Hamilton take the bull by the horn soon. By the way, Iman says hi and is asking if you still remember her birthday. It's on Friday the 27th. She's turning 10. Of course I do. And I'll tell you, I panicked last week because last week I said on Friday, I said I'm not taking uh, comments this uh, today from the, from the YouTube or whatever because uh, it's, it's just getting out of hand. I felt bad all weekend, and then I was like, "Oh my God! If it was if it was Iman's birthday, and I and I was I was a mean, w w too mean to talk to anybody on that day. I'm never gonna forgive myself. So thank gosh, it's this Friday, so I can't wait. And of course, I remember hey, Iman. I can't wait. Uh, Daily Mix says, "Good morning, Joe. You've always done an amazing job, like always, my friend. Thank you so much." Uh, Jeremiah says, "Travis Sava Trophy smiling." Uh, I need a black Stetson. <laughs> says J C Greeter. Pale Primate says, I'm not sure. Uh, all right, so th that, that was really the, the, the wackest one I wanted to, wanted to, to share. So you, if, if, I'm sorry if I missed your other comment. Please leave it again if you did. If you want me to get to it. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones, phones. Didn't the open label end in September? Was thinking CMS placebo would be completed by March or April? Yes. And uh, so we were, we, were, we were within our rights to hope, hope, hope to get data in September. Remy, the, he had said October, and he said uh, Q4, Q4, because he wanted to sort of downplay it. And so I guess uh, they, they were hoping for it sooner as well. CMS, it, it, uh, look on, I, I don't have it up here, but we looked at clinicaltrials.gov. The one for CMS has their end date, approximate end date of July 31st. And in Kostava's presentations are saying Q3. So it could be toward the beginning of Q3. 
Govix had a having a good day on their Zika patent. It's interesting. I'll check that out. Pale says, glad you are back. Thank you, my friend. It's great to be back. Good to see you, my friend. Off Zal, Sava shorts are playing with fire will end in painful death. <laughs> Fernando, good morning, Jay. Do you know any pharma that deals with aging? Uh, cassava. I don't know if you're kidding or not. Uh, Sava will see the greatest short covering in history, bigger than GameStop or AMC. Feel pity for the short fund managers. Yep, indeed. Ridenard, has anyone informed Sava of the recent share intel news and the impact on stock prices of companies using them? I, I believe people are emailing Eric and Remy. Pale, I think you may be wrong regarding effect of drug on those who decline fewer than five. If a five point decline is average without treatment, half of those would decline fewer than five. Fair enough. MG, hi Joe, great show. Your valuation used one year of prescriptions. Is that standard? or should multiple years be used? One year valuation seems like a great deal for the potential buyer. Great question, MG. Great question. So we didn't do, if you were, uh, we did a takeout valuation. And so that is the typical way you do a takeout valuation. You, you do a projection of peak sales and the peak sales year, what's the best gonna be? And then four to five times that projected peak sales is the multiple. And that is the typical takeout in biotech. But, uh, that's not the only way to do valuations. Take my biotech class, my upcoming biotech class. Uh, you could also do a discounted cash flow. And in a discounted cash flow, you do add up every single year. Uh, with a discounted cash flow, as we say every month, once a month or so, people sometimes ask, does a stock have an intrinsic value? Is it really worth something? Or is it just a fashion show and it's just whatever it's worth whatever people are willing to pay for it, but it doesn't have an intrinsic value? No, stocks have an intrinsic value. They are uh, stocks give you the right to a portion of the profits of a company. So if you own one percent of the stock of a company, you have a right to one percent of the profits of that company. So that stock has an intrinsic value of one percent of all of the profits of the, that company will ever make. And then you subtract, uh, you subtract from that twice. You discount from that twice. So it's worth all the cash flows you'll ever get, and then you have 1% of that. You, you, you know, divide up however many shares of stock. But the company's worth all the cash flows it will ever get, and then you discount from that. You subtract from that twice. One, because of risk. There's a risk you won't get it. Uh, so you, and how much do you discount? It depends. If it's a, if it's a utility, and it's like, it seems pretty safe. Maybe you don't discount that much. If it's a biotech and it's risky, maybe you discount a lot. The other reason you discount or subtract is because of the time value of money. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar in 10 years. Even if you just put it in a 10 year treasury, you would get, uh, you would get a yield on that, on that dollar. So you, so you discount some more. How much do you discount? Typically you discount by the discount rate is going to be like the, the, the interest rate on the 10 year or something like that, something like that. So anyway, so that's a discounted cash flow. So a stock is worth all the profits it'll ever make minus some for risk, minus some for uh, the time value of money. So that is, so another, so another way we could do the valuation for cassava is to add up all the profits they'll ever make on cassava. You pick some terminal point in the future to end that because you can't just do infinity. So you say every year they'll make, you know, you add up every year and then it's, you end it at some terminal point in the future, add it all up and, and subtract some for risk, so subtract some for time value of money. That's the total value of the company and divide it up by the number of shares and there is your share price. So there's another way to get to your share price other than the takeout value. Take my biotech class. But you make a good point. You're not, you're only adding, you're only getting one year. What if I want to account for every year? Then you do a discounted cash flow. Now a discounted cash flow, the critique of that is that it can never be right, especially in biotech, because you discount too much for risk. So if you're subtracting 80% for risk uh, and the company hits, then you're, you're off by a factor of five. So you didn't get it right. <laughs> uh, and if the drug fails, it might be worth zero, whereas you had it worth billions, so you didn't get it right. So uh, the, you do a uh, discounted cash flow is is uh, the standard in investing. Uh, you don't go to business school without you know doing that sort of thing. 
But on the other hand, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the innovation stocks, especially uh, biotech, it's the one calculation that's really never right. So, but they do it anyway. But anyway, uh, that, so that so anyway, there you go. There's your answer. Pale, and I believe about half of those who declined on the drug did better than five, and five did worse. Is that correct? Half of those who declined on the drug did better than five. I, I, I guess. Is it, it is good information to have that more moderate people were in the second 100 than were in the first. Yes, it is. Do we know how many of mild versus moderate were in the first 100 or in the second 100? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think they ever did give us anything besides uh, how those groups did. I don't think they gave us, there was 116 and 100 or whatever. I don't think they gave us that. I've been watching the show this week, but couldn't watch it live. Good shows so far this week. Thank you, my friend. Yesterday... There was just a heck of a lot of content. It was just exciting bullets flying content. So that always makes for, <laughs> it's really funny. And it wasn't really until this, this moment right now, I realized that I've been in the shoes of people in the news business <laughs> where they, uh, they, they, they kind of, uh, instead of rooting for something good to happen, instead of rooting for the good thing to happen, they're rooting for action to happen. <laughs> I'm not rooting for just any action to happen, but I have, uh-oh, I have this perverse incentive. It's, if anything happens, it makes for great content. Of course, yeah, it was great news yesterday. Biogen enriched their studies by only including patients with IQs <laughs> over 120. Is that correct? Why would you take, if you had an IQ over 120, you wouldn't take that stuff. I don't see how that's possible. Thumbs up for Joe today. Thank you, my friend. Please hit the like button. Jay, it seems we now have a better idea on the strength and limitations for semiflam. It works great on mild, but not on moderate. Regardless, data is still better than approved lacane mab, and it doesn't kill. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, my friend. Dan, we see the drug works. Are the endpoints reached? Uh, endpoint was ADAS COG in the phase two, I guess. I mean, the it was an open label study, so it was it wasn't powered for statistical significance or anything like that. It was an open label for uh, technically a safety study, I think. Uh, we see the drug works. Are the endpoints reached? Whoops, minimal. If you fell off a cliff, you would hope the results were minimal. Semifilam slowed the progress of AD average by ninety point nine percent at point five points. Compare that to Biogen's, that was approved at only 27%. Silver, I didn't know you had a statistical mind, my friend. Thank you. Scuba, given the stratification of the data, would SABA only seek approval for mild Alzheimer's? I don't think so. I think this would be a label thing. It still worked seemingly in mid, but in the label, I think they would say this is especially indicated for mild, uh, and the data for mid is not as strong as is, is what I think. Bob, thanks for another great show. Bob, thank you for uh, thank you for your kind words. Bob, thank you for your great contributions to the Investor Club Discord. And I forgot to say thank you for sending me that uh, document, legal document from Kasabi yesterday that I shared with with uh, with everybody on the show yesterday. Thank you, my friend, for everything. Sixty to seventy percent of Alzheimer's market out there is mild, and this drug works great for that. FDA, what are you waiting for? They're waiting for Biogen's next under the table paycheck. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Daily, hey Joe, I hope you are doing good. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and right back at you, my friend. Great to see you. Great to see your puppy. I always watching this show since day one. Always be watching, but I don't comment as much as I used to. I noticed uh, you were one of the first people that was really encouraging to me, and I really appreciate it. I bet I'll never forget that. I hope in 30 years when I'm still doing this, I still remember that, and I hope you're still here, my friend. IKT has been on a roll. I had to pick it up at 50 cents. Amazing what patients do, LOL. Way to go, my friend. Got your double daily. I'm really happy for you. IKT, they still need to close over $1 right for 10 straight days, 10 straight trading days to get rid of the compliance issue. The extension is great, but being compliant will only make it better. Also, was it yesterday I posted in the Investors Club District? They, they, uh, more news from IKT. Uh, NASDAQ gave them another 180 days. So they're, they're, uh, they're not, they're, they still have time anyway. Why did Sava drop so bad today? Uh, 8% because it's, I mean, the market is down. It's 8%. Hmm. 
It's biotech. Same foot as yesterday, buddy William. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Silver stop outs are killing the stock at open and the shorts are taking advantage of that. The play is long term hold and no stop outs. Scare, get out. If you put stop losses in there, there's people that can see them and they can they can borrow as many shares as they want to drive the stock down as much as they want temporarily at least and take out your real shares. 006 Road King. Hi, Joe. Does yesterday's Saba results change your outlook at all? Do you think the drop is due to expectations being too high or general lack of understanding at all? No. Uh, they're uh, 47% uh, improved on an absolute basis, and that is with people in that study almost certainly not having Alzheimer's disease. And then in the, and, and then the, the ones that did improve, improved a lot, almost as much as you would expect to worsen in a year as much as they improved. And uh, the both the CMS and the phase threes are accounting for this. CMS is enriched, so it's only responders. It, I think the CMS is gonna be excellent, and I think it's gonna lead to approval. And phase three is stratified be ahead of time. They're checking people, are you mid or are you mild? We're checking now, and they're gonna have that data, and they're gonna be able to say, look, uh, here's how mild did. And by the way, we saw that uh, about 20% of people have Alzheimer's are severe, so they're not gonna be in the trial. And then, uh, so that leaves about five eighths will be mild. So that means this should be working for about, uh, should be working well for perhaps five eighths of the people in the trial. And oh yeah, phase three, they're also doing the phosphorylated tau 181, the total tau blood biomarker test. So we know that those people will have, or they're much more likely to have Alzheimer's than the open, than, than most of the people in the open label study. So yes, I am encouraged. I could have been more encouraged. It's true. Does this announcement close phase two? No, CMS is part of phase two. So they came out of their end of phase two meeting. They said, hold on a minute. We are not done phase two. No, none other than Robert Temple himself the architect of breakthrough therapy designation, as well as the head of the FDA neuroscience, Billy Dunn, were in our meeting for end of phase two, and they gave us this continuation uh, of phase two to, to run that has this funny enrichment uh, cognition maintenance study uh, extension, and that should lead to breakthrough therapy designation. Robert Temple was in that meeting, uh, and they came out with this uh, study. It should lead to early approval, if you ask me. And it's only in responders, and it's working so well in responders. This is a buying opportunity. Silver, shorts, mild Alzheimer's disease comes before moderate every single time. Wakis, thank you for your hard work and perseverance. Your show is great, and hope for us long as convictions. Hope Remy takes the bull by its horn soon, like Roger James Hamlin. By the way, Iman says hi and is asking if you still remember her 10th birthdays on Friday. Of course I do, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Let's all remember that, everybody, on Friday. Remember we had that birthday last year? It's already been a year. And you know what's so great? That uh, that's, we, started, we started the show end of uh, November. So around January sort of our, is sort of our uh, anniversary as well. So we'll have our, we'll have our uh, one-year anniversary of the show. Every time we celebrate Iman's birthday, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do the anniversary of the show sort of thing, too. So we'll sort of make that uh, Joe Springer needs to differentiate himself with a black Stetson. Of course I do. That's a good idea. Of course, black, it would, it would uh, blend in with the background. Oh, I got more for this. I'm still waiting for two more pieces for the set. I got some more, though. New chemiotics article today. That's Dr. Lewis Robinson, friend of the show. Why cassava's semifilam results are not a placebo effect? Very unlikely with one-year results of open label in 200 patients. 47% improved by 4.7 points. Unreal. Dance the talk, good to see you. SSR should still be in effect until end of today. How can shorts circumvent short sale restriction? Good point. If it goes down more than 10% in a day, I think it is, then you can't, uh, then the uptick rule is in effect, I guess. I gotta, I gotta relook at that rule. I'm not sure. Basically, I think they just don't care about the rules, is what I think. Two words to Remy. Higher share intel, Remy. <laughs> I am with you, my friend. Higher share intel. Daily mix. I love Roger. I do too. 
just because my puppy's name is Roger. Is that right? <laughs> Got him four months ago. Congratulations. Well, happy birthday to Roger four months ago. Yeah, Remy, higher share Intel. I personally think Remy has a plan, even though we are not seeing a fast reaction. Waiting for dismissal to start the action, maybe. I'm very excited. Things are in, I'm very, I mean, they've got the, uh, the, this, God, I can't remember the, the I'm going to call it the besmirchify. You guys got to help me with it again. The demeaning, the disinformation, the demeaning. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of that word. The defamation. They got the defamation suit. They got the defamation suit. And that's great. But I'm just so excited about the CMS. And we're, what, six months away from that? And then the phase threes as well. I think it's going to get to market early. I think, it's, I think the wheels are in motion. Do, 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 do. This is a war. When companies have to hire share intel and FBI agents, next maybe the Marines can join. <laughs> Seriously. Major changes needed in the stock, in the work of restoring the stock market again. No question about that. Is there a way to get investors to partner with the company? I mean, like offer mini partnerships where individuals get profit of first X number of patients. If enough individuals can partner, we can get a few million in for till for a dividend, right? So I, I think you're talking about loaning this company to pay out a dividend to fry the shorts. That would be market manipulation. Uh, you, you, a dividend itself must be uh, paid out of retained earnings. So they couldn't technically pay a dividend. They would have, it would have to come from retained earnings. They could uh, pay a token though. What they could do is issue a uh, share that, you know, it's so funny. What we were talking about is we, 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 we were talking about wanting cassava to issue a preferred share on T zero. So it's a, it's a digital token. It's not a cash dividend, but it is, it's actually a share dividend. It is a share dividend. Uh, so you can issue a share dividend. Uh, and then that would be uh, a token, a dividend token on the, on, uh, on T zero. And so that actually could be as sort of a dual listing. It's not, it's not technically a dual listing, but anyway, I think you're talking about loaning them money. I, I had that. I think it's a good idea. I had that idea for uh, Sanford Robertson to loan the company money to uh, he would take should take an even bigger position, loan them money, uh, have the, the dividend payout, fry the shorts, watch the stock go up so much, make a ton of money, loan them money again to do it again, fry them again, loan them. You could, you could keep going in a virtuous circle. But I, somebody told me you can't do that because it's got to come from retained earnings or else it's just manipulation. Kartik, love your work. Just joined your membership. How do I get on your Discord, please? Kartik, I'm so happy about that. Uh, you get, and if you join the, the, you have to join the Small Caps newsletter, and it's not free, uh, but you get this, you get two stocks a month, you get the Discord, and you get the book as well. Uh, and then I, I, just, I just email you a link. You get an email with a link to the uh, Discord and uh, the book, and a link to the, all the reports of all the past stocks as well, and where you can see all of them, all of, the, all of them. Schwapping G, about subcutaneous pharmaceuticals. Do you know if the Medicare approved uh, subcutaneous is pharmaceuticals for 06? I don't, but we are seeing it on formularies now. Uh, we saw it on Humana, Humana, something. We saw it on two, uh, some, some sleuths in the investors called Discord gave us two links. These, it's being listed. Now, I've not seen it on Medicare yet, but I bet we do. Uh, remember, their board member is the former head of Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the board that does the uh, body that does pricing recommendations for Medicare and Medicaid. Daily, I think Saba has a vision for being a big pharma one day since they bought the new building. It is a huge next step after approval. They can produce the drug in-house and have a warehouse. Ooh, interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Chuck, good to see you, my friend. Hi, Joe. Great way to continue the show after experiences. Tech. Hey, thank you, my friend. I, 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 I did a little discombobulated, but you're, you're giving me kudos. Thank you, my friend. So glad to be a member of the Discord to get a better insight uh, on your great stock picks. Chuck, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the kudos. And it is so great to have you in the Discord and to have you on the show. Thank you, my friend. Silver, hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Thank you. 
daily yesterday was a lot of views on the live like 250 or something around that yeah it was when we got off the show it was uh more than 700 viewers almost 800 viewers and that was just on youtube we're also uh twitter got more than four i think it was, then later i checked it was more than but just when i when i first checked youtube was almost 800 twitter was almost 400 and linkedin was like almost 100. so not only is it getting better on youtube and then i st and i started on facebook as well now too so getting better and better my friend and then once we get the once i'm done the biotech class i'll open up the uh, dividends each day as well bill in texas so thank you so much daily for the encouragement thanks for your continuing efforts joe you got it do you think the legal firm saba hired for its defamation lawsuit has the technology and expertise to go after naked shoring the way west christian does no i don't uh they're like the de they're simply going for defamation it seems uh the the, the, the I, for all of the, uh, the for all of the things they went after them that's related to shorting uh, all of the FUD and uh, those stock driving the stock price down to make money. They never really went after them for the for it's it's the prime brokers that are doing that are doing that crap. So uh, no, I don't. I, they would have to hire. Uh, they're they're they got good people for defamation, but specifically to go after the fraudulently making shares and destroying their company on purpose. Uh, you would need. I think you need share intel and less Christian. Daily, all I care about is safety, just like what the FDA requested. They approved Biogen's brain damage pills without this progress. Yeah, Biogen's brain bleeding and uh, brain swelling pills. Tim, do you know when is the next phase three enrollment update or earnings update? Still worried about CMS data because the trial is small, which makes it harder to show statistical significance. That's true. Uh, phase three enrollment update. I don't know because uh, end of the year, it's not just the end of the quarter. Sometimes the end of the year, it, uh, it's not. Instead of people, instead of companies reporting every three months, uh, some of them it's every three months except for after the fourth quarter. It's like they like wait an extra month to get their annual report together and all that stuff because you got the whole year of stuff to get together. I can't remember if Cassava does that or not. I can't remember, frankly. J, but that's, that's when I would expect the next enrollment update. JC, hi Joe, good morning. Wonder if Sava increasing dosage for those that have moderate AD would actually help uh, some of those patients improve. Maybe this is a question for Remy. Interesting. The we've, one thing we talked about with the dosage uh, is that they, they looked at 50 and 100 milligrams, and I think they originally did maybe 200 as well, but they, I think they want to go, they said that the difference between 50 and 100 was not much, that they were saturating they thought pretty much at 50. So 100 is, is, was, was seemingly fine, no toxicities, but uh, it didn't seem to be doing any more. And then we looked at the, we talked about the half-life was like four to six hours. So we speculated that uh, taking it more often, now it's already every 12 hours, so you're taking it twice a day, but we speculated that, especially given the low toxicities, uh, you could take 50 milligrams every four to six hours and probably be fine. And I, I ran that by uh, neurologist, Dr. Ted, Dr. Theodore, I'm sorry, Ted, I can't remember your uh, last name, but Ted Bauer, uh, Boyer, Ted Boyer. Uh, uh, and he, he said that, that, yeah, that generally sounds about right. And so, uh, that, you know, it'll clear every four to six hours. You can keep, it, it won't build up. You'll, you won't keep getting more and more. And then it's not toxic in the first place. And then that's, so that's probably about right. So if you did, if you're like my loved one is going downhill, this might be helping. I want I want to I want to see if it's, what else can I do to see if it does help. Uh, you, you could increase the frequency would probably be the better thing. Go it, it, go every four to six hours. Every you could do fifty milligrams every four hours or hundred milligrams every six hours, maybe something like that. Not a doctor, not an investment advisor. <laughs> what do you think of ATNF in the news today? I didn't see ATNF. What happened? Defamatory. I can never remember that. Okay. Why? I know. I know. Fame. I want to live for. I'll never forget now. Fame. Defame. Daily Mix, a super sticker, a Shiba dog in combat position. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. You've given me so much with your encouragement, and I'm a super sticker. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Daily. Thanks so much. Bruce, 
Can someone explain to B. Riley the data results in detail? <laughs> so B. Riley, I didn't see. I didn't see what B. Riley said. Oh, so uh, you're saying not loan them money? Says Novem. <laughs> oh man, I'm not familiar with that number. Novem na gentillionaire. How big of a how many zeros does that have? Not loan them money. I meant if they got a partner and cash infusion of ten million, they could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they got a partner, like an actual partner, I thought you were saying get together a bunch of people and just a bunch of investors and, and give them some money. Yeah, if they got an actual partnership with a big farmer that was a cash infusion, they'd get a lot more than ten million dollars. You might be thinking ten billion. They'd get something more. They get. They'd probably get billions, uh, like a, like at least like one billion. Like it'd be about like a one billion upfront and and billion dollar milestones type of stuff. Their their peak sales. There's no way it's under ten billion. And it's possibly 20 or better billion. So their milestones will reflect that in the single digit billion, something like that. So anyway, they, they could get 10 billion, they could get 5 billion, 2 or 3 billion, something like that, uh, as, as chunks along the way here and there. Uh, if, if it's a partnership, not a buyout. Uh, so maybe you're thinking 10 billion. So anyway, yeah, they, they, they absolutely they could get 10 billion as an upfront lump sum. Uh, and then maybe that's more like a buyout. The, maybe they could get. Uh, Maybe they get two billion as 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 part of a as part of a partnership first payment or something like that, and then more you know milestones on the way. So yeah, they got they got a couple billion they can uh, send it out as dividends. Absolutely, I'd be willing to give them ten k for the rights to profit from the first two patients. Bit of a gamble if that pays off or not. So I see what you're saying. So the the fact that it's a partnership, it is profits. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't frankly know. Uh, hi, Joe. The share price will bounce as soon as lawsuit is dismissed, right? Also, phase three, they need to increase dosage. We'll see the positive impact. Phase two, just a safety concern. I have no idea. I, I think this thing, when it's going to get to market, when it's clear that it will get to market, it will start to have its price discovery. Uh, and they, they can manipulate a lot until then. I don't know. We, we've seen this do all sorts of irrational stuff. I don't know. I don't know what it'll do on the on the uh, lawsuit dismissal. Hi, Joe. Great job, says Mike. In most diseases, thank you, Mike, i.e. cancer, the early treatment stage will allow most patients to cover the best. Same will apply for Alzheimer's. I don't understand why Remy doesn't, does spoke to public regarding the awesome results. In most diseases like cancer, early stage treatment will allow patients to cover best. Yeah, recover best. Yeah, yeah. So the earlier you get to it, right? Okay. The earlier the, in most diseases, the earlier you get to it, the better. Absolutely. Same applies for Alzheimer's. Absolutely. I don't understand why uh, Remy's not speaking out publicly. Probably for liability. Tom Liu is bottom ticking it again. Got in at twenty five eighty. Unbelievable. Robert, good to see you. If biomarkers are comparable in mild and moderate, smifilam works. It just shows that some effects of Alzheimer's are not reversible. Even a disease cure will not help patients once they, once they progress too far. Yep. Perhaps cognitive therapy will help. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was thinking to myself is that that's true, except that you can regrow brain cells, uh, at least in some parts of the brain. So I, I think that soon enough, they'll find ways to regrow brain cells in all parts of the brain. Doesn't seem like too much of a, there's brain derived, there's, there's brain derived neurotrophic factors, other factors that, 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 uh, that do that stuff, stem cells. See, there seems like there's a bunch of ways to get, to get brain cells growing in uh, other parts of the brain. So, I, I, so I'm, I'm with you, except that who knows, like you're saying, cognitive therapy, uh, other ways of, of, of getting them, that yes, that there's, that stopping the progression and letting things heal on its own is only going to do so much. But there's other ways, like you're saying. Uh, does anyone else feel like they're advantaged players sitting at a blackjack table? I like it, my friend, because we understand stuff. Joe, thank you for all the wisdom you provide. La Holy, you're very welcome. Very welcome. <laughs> if not for your knowledge, I would have not kept the stock till now. It's, that is one thing about uh, knowing what you got is you have, when, when things get scary, you have no idea. Like, well, what do I do? Do I hold? Do I buy? It's cheaper now. Do I buy? Or it's scary. Do I sell? Is it going to keep going? Yeah, you have to, you, <laughs> you actually have to read the book. 
you know, as they say. Jack M., the question about Medicare approving Ferosix is conflating what happened with Aduhelm and Ferosix. Completely different. Aduhelm is part B, Ferosix is part D. All you need it uh, is on the formularies. Oh, okay, thank you. I didn't even realize that was, I, I knew you needed it on the form. I didn't, I didn't even realize that he was asking that. Jack, very astute of you. Thank you very much. New, says Jeff. Kartik, sorry, but I just joined via YouTube. Oh, uh, so you should, uh, if you, so if you join via YouTube, you should be able to email me. It should tell you, here's an email address to email me because I can give you the discord link, the automated way through YouTube, but it goes stale like after a week. So you should have gotten sent or access to my email address. Uh, and if you email that, I'll uh, put you. I'll, I'll just send you the, the Discord link. I've been downplaying the the uh, getting the Discord by itself. I guess it's still. I forgot. I forgot you could still do that through YouTube. I was wondering how people were finding it. <laughs> uh, yes, if if you want to, if you, that's that's right. The substat the uh, the small caps newsletter pays for itself more than ten times over. I know for some people, if you're like you're in college or whatever, I know it's expensive, but if you're like a money manager, it's super duper cheap. B. Riley downgraded for lack of information. So let's talk about the investment banks. Uh, we shouldn't get too high with the highs or low with the lows with investment banks. Uh, H.C. Wainwright, would, would they put their 145 tag on it yesterday or something like that? Loved it. Uh, B. Riley downgrades for lack of information. Uh, remember, the, how do they, what, why do these companies exist? H.C. Wainwright and B. Riley. Did you ever, you ever, you ever give Wainwright any money? You ever subscribe to B. Riley services? No. So how do they make their money? They make their money by helping Cassava Sciences raise money and then getting a big cut. It's a great business. It's a great business. It's a very lucrative business. You help Cassava Sciences raise two hundred million dollars and you keep five percent. You're just the middleman. You you pocket ten million bucks just because Cassava's got a great idea and some other person has money, you get to stand in between and make 10 million bucks. <laughs> it's a great business. And so that's how they make their money. So H.C. Wainwright kissing Cassava's behind and saying this stock is a, what, a, a quadruple right here or, or a quintuple right here uh, is, uh, is, helping them, is helping Cassava with, with their raise money, helping them raise money just with that headline by helping their share price. And then, and then when they raise money, if they ever do, uh, that it'll help them. Uh, B. Riley says, we don't think uh, Cassava is going to use us to raise money. We want to appear credible. And so we don't want to always just uh, say buy, 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 buy. When we think a company is not going to use us to raise money anymore, we say sell. <laughs> so uh, that's, I'm not saying that's what's happening here. But I am saying that that's a possible, those are the incentives as far as how these companies make money. They make, the, they make their money by helping these companies, uh, they make by helping the stocks raise money. The investment banks do, like B. Riley and, and H.C. Wainwright. And, uh, and so, you, so usually it's, uh, they, they have their incentives. So, so they, they can't veer too far from the truth. But if you see one being overly rosy or one being overly negative, it, look at their incentives. And so I, I just see H.C. Rain, Wainwright as not having a, a special insight that others don't have, but having incentives and, and good understanding. That was great data, of course. But then B. Riley, I don't see them, you know, saying, I don't see them being especially bearish. I see them rightly saying, Cassava didn't use us when they just raised 50 million bucks. They've got uh, over $100 million, more than they'll need. Uh, we don't think they're going to raise money. We think they'll have a partner or a buyout before they ever raise money. We don't mind bashing them, uh, cutting the price. So that, that, that's my feeling on that. Not saying that's definitely the case, but that's my feeling. Jeff, stages four and five, both considered moderate. Stages two and three considered mild. Thank you. Why do you think three trials are stratified between mild and moderate? Hope you're right. What do you mean? I'm not sure what the question is. I, I think that's, I think it's just, I think just plain good news. First of all, they're all going to have Alzheimer's disease. And then it's not, we'll, we'll get an average, we'll get average overall uh, ADAS COG scores, and that is the primary outcome. But everybody's going to have Alzheimer's disease, so it should be pretty good. 
and then it'll also be, uh, and then also most people will have mild. Is that is that what you're asking? Why do you think phase three trials? Yes, okay, that's not what you're asking. But anyway, most people should have like 62.5 percent, five eighths or so should have mild. Uh, so uh, there, it, that should that should help the average as well, uh, and and everyone having Alzheimer's should as well. So I think I think it actually should be pretty good on its own. But even if it's not, you can always they'll be able to look at the mild and say what's helping those people. But I don't even think they'll have to. That'll be most people. So I think it's going to be good. Next earning end of March. Thank you. Uninterpretable, says Bruce. Oh, uninterpretable data, said B. Riley. Okay, so they didn't bash him too much if they ever want to did, did want to get him to raise in the future. The CMS by July 31st, that's what it says on clinicaltrials.gov. Data will not make public only a few months later after you decide on BTD. CMS uh, data available to the public. Well, the data CMS is blinded. It's double blind. Uh, ra it's randomized uh, and double blind. Randomized meaning uh, there's a control group, in this case a placebo. Uh, in, in other cases, it might be uh, in the future, the control group might be Somifilam. Somifilam makes it to the market and now it's the first line therapy and no ethical doctor is going to take you off of Somifilam. But now they also want to give you a novice's drug to help you grow brain cells back or something like that. So anyway, that's the control group in the future because Saba Sciences could be in the control group. But anyway, it's randomized, uh, double blind, double blind. So uh, doctors and patients, doctors might subconsciously, unconsciously treat patients differently if they know they're getting the drug or not. So doctors don't know, patients don't know. Uh, in some studies where there are characteristic side effects, then you still know anyway. Or uh, if, if you give a new method of administration uh, and uh, the, 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 like, like, uh, like with like Biogen, like if the, when they were giving those the, the infusions, I don't know what they were doing for the placebos, but I hope they weren't really. If they were replicating edema and, and, and brain bleeding just to fit in with like the drug, I don't know. Anyway, so that they don't have that problem in this one. Taking this pill that doesn't have any noticeable side effects at all versus taking a sugar pill, no one's going to notice. So this is a good randomized trial. So anyway, it's CMS is double blind, so nobody knows until it's unlocked. So even cassava doesn't know how it's going. But everybody knows that it's been enriched with just responders. So everybody thinks it's going well. Except placebo. Hey, brother, thanks for the show. Do you still feel we have the real thing and we'll be in the hundreds again after getting the data? I think we'll be in the hundreds and then uh, in the four digits as this becomes clear that it's going to market. What the choppy timing of that will be, I have no idea. IKT, we talked all about it. Oh my God, halted. IKT halted and down to 84 cents. Hey Joe, can you start your own analyst company and uh, do upgrade for the real investors? Yes. Hmm, what other incentives might B. Riley have, i.e., who else might be paying for this rating? They're in the business of making money. Yeah. Uh, IKT raised money. Oh, how disappointing. Well, it's a private placement, so we know that that is better. They were able to find an investor. Uh, they came to them and said, we want to, we want to buy some, uh, but we don't want to buy on the open market, <laughs> but they, I mean, it's smart of him to raise money. Uh, that's, I mean, and they, they didn't do it at 40 cents. They, they've got it. They got their quick double. I don't mind it too much, but they, they didn't do too bad. But remember they came public at 10 bucks, just like a year and a half ago, two years ago, something. Wow. Two or three years ago now, maybe something like that. But thank you, Larry. I didn't realize. Lindsay and Wang needs to step up and answer clinical questions. We haven't heard from her in a long time, and she is the brains behind all this. Okay, they raised 10 million bucks. So, about well, almost, it's about what, 12 million shares? 11 or 12 million shares, yeah. Okay, well, the one thing about that is Dr. Milton Werner. Uh, owns about 20% of the company. I guess now he owns about 
what, 18% of the company or 17% of the company or something. But uh, he's, he's, in, he's in it with everybody else. So if it's a good, if it's, if it's you know, he's, uh, no one feels it more than him. So IKT is the real, the real deal, big fan of their CEO. I like Dr. Milton Werner a lot as well. Just did a $10 million race. And you know what? What's good about it is that it's a private placement. We know that's encouraging. Somebody with brains came to them and said, we want to buy. Uh, and that's not, that's not the same. What, what, what's the opposite of that? Being a press release company where you have a shelf registration allowing you to share sales directly into the market. So when you or I go to buy shares, we might be buying directly from uh, IKT. They're not doing that. So those types of companies, they issue press releases to drive the, the stock up and then they issue, they sell right into it. They're not doing that. And the, the reason you would do that is because you have to. This is better. This, the having, uh, this is probably what we'll probably find out down the road. This was some uh, biotech focused fund that did their homework and said, we like it. And so that is an endorsement. Uh, so, so that's good. And then in this tough environment for financing as well, they got some money. It's, it's, it's a tough environment. Getting 10 million, remember we said yesterday, even super rich people don't like to lose a million bucks. No one's throwing away 10 million bucks, especially in this environment. It's tough. They got money, good for them. These days, that sends the stock higher. It's hanging around. Uh, you haven't heard it from. What's the next catalyst for Saba? It is there's defamation, enrollment, defamation and enrollment, I guess. But the big one is CMS. Oh, excuse me, defamation enrollment. But the next one will be uh, the dismissal of the class action. So there's three. There's the class action lawsuits. Uh, that should come up uh, next few weeks, the, dis the dismissal of that, the request for dismissal of that. There is the enrollment updates we should get, uh, as, as Bob said, end of March, and then uh, CMS, uh, but then the, and the defamation as well. So we got those four things in the next six months. Not too shabby, plus whatever else comes up, plus the new 10K, their new annual report. That'll be, that'll be exciting. All right, another long show. Great to see you guys. 119 people still here. Good to see you guys. Uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. Shine up for the shine up, shine up for the newsletter, and I'll see you in the Discord. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna run because it's been a long show. Great to see you guys. Uh, thanks for being here. See you tomorrow. See you in the Discord. What am I saying? See you in the Discord.